chapter 2 and verse 1 through 4 is going to be our scripture for today. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1 through 4 uh, is, is our scripture. And it is um, what our daily devotional is, is about today uh, on the power of God's word. And so I want to I'll read it into your hearing. And then I want to pull out uh, some principles uh, about the word of God today. Listen to what it says. First Peter chapter two, um, verse one through four. Okay. Uh, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speak, as newborn babies desire the pure, or one translation says, sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Hey, man, I want to just remind us to desire the word, to have a desire for the word of God. Hey, Amen. Um, Peter here um, talks about the word in some very picturesque um, ways. Um, he talks about uh, our relationship with the word, not so much as student and teacher, which certainly when we come to the word of God, we can learn um, how to live this life uh, in Christ out. Uh, so we come, we come with our pens, we come with our notebooks and our pads, we come with our dictionaries, we, we come studying uh, the word and definitions and all of that so that our knowledge about God, our knowledge about ourselves, our knowledge about the enemies that we face uh, will go to another level. And certainly we need to have a relationship with the word of God as, as God is our teacher, he's our master teacher, and we are his disciples, we are his students. Um, but here in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, um, Peter introduces us to a, another relationship that we ought to have with the word of God. And it is not um, student teacher, but it is a mother baby relationship. Uh, and I think that's a very uh, informative and very insightful way to help us to understand the kind of relationship God desires for us to have with him and to have with his word. And he says that we ought to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, right? So he, he wants us to develop a desire, to develop a, 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 sin, a, a, a taste, uh, a want, an appreciation for the word of God, just as a baby has that same natural desire for the sincere, sincere milk of the word, uh, or sincere milk that comes from the breast of its mother. And so God wants us to have that kind of relationship with him and with his word. And there in, in, in verse three, it says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. <laughs> when we get a taste, just a little taste of who the Lord is and what he means in our lives, and we understand that God is gracious, it ought to cause us to desire his word. And when it says that if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, it means that you have come to an understanding of the goodness of the grace of God. And when you see the word grace or gracious, uh, write down unmerited favor, unearned favor. Unmerited or unearned favor is what graciousness or God's grace is all about. And all of us who have uh, a, a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, we have tasted, hallelujah, of the grace of, the grace of God. For Ephesians tells us what? That we are saved by the grace of God. It is, it is not of works 
lest we would boast. In other words, we're not saved because of the works that we do for God. We're saved because of God's grace work in our lives. Now, of course, we know and when we study the, the life that God rewards, once we are saved by God's grace through faith, then we are supposed to work for the God who saved us. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to use our gifts, talents, and abilities, our time, our talents, and our treasures, our spiritual gifts to do the work that God has assigned us to do. But we don't work for our, our salvation. We are saved by grace through faith. And once you have tasted of that grace of God, then it ought to cause you to want more of God's word in your life. And I probably could uh, pass the microphone around or, or give the floor to each one of us. And we could spend at least 20 to 30 minutes talking about uh, uh, an instance where you have experienced the grace of God, where God has done something for you or has done something in your life or opened a door or made a way. And when you look back on it, even right now, you'd have to admit, I did not deserve what God did for me. I could go down a whole list of things that are that are in my life right now today. And the truth of the matter is, no matter what I say about it, I don't deserve it. Uh, I don't deserve the wife that I have. Camille is a beautiful woman, great Christian, uh, great mother, great wife. And as hard as I work at being a really good husband, the truth is, uh, I really don't deserve her as a wife. I don't deserve the kind of church that I pastor. I get a lot of credit um, for the things that take place through and in and from the New Horizons Church. When, when people say New Horizons, I get the privilege of having my name attached to it um, and then also ha having uh, my name on the marquee as the pastor of the church. But the truth is, uh, our church is a much better church than I am a pastor. God does things through our church and through our ministry uh, in spite of me, in spite of my mistakes, in spite, in spite of my faults and failures. God has shown grace on our church and God has shown grace on me and allowed me to be a part of what he's doing. That's that's God's grace uh, in a person's life. I I have so many experiences in God, uh, whether it's jobs or places I've been able to go, places I've been able to visit. And the truth is, it is because of God's grace. It's his unmerited favor that has shown up in my life. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just giving um, just a few highlights um, about God's grace that's operated in my life. And I'm sure you have some areas in your life where God's grace has shown up. And I think you would do well sometime today before your head hits the pillow is to write down some things that you are grateful for God's grace working in your life. It might be that God has healed you uh, from some sickness or disease, or God has done something in your family, or God has done something uh, financially or materially for you, or God has done something with the way you process life and it's changed the way you see things. And write those things down about God's grace and where it's shown up in your life. And when you write the grace of God down, it, it <laughs> will cause you to become grateful for the grace in your life. And it's a great way to start the morning is to have a grace list that you are grateful for. And just begin to thank God for his grace because um, we've tasted and we know that the Lord is good. I know the Lord is good, not because somebody told me he was good, although many people have told me he's good, but I have my own testimony because I've tasted, <laughs> that's what he says, indeed, uh, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Um, you ever go to the mall, and um, when we used to be able to go to the mall freely, more, uh, more freely, and they would have, and you go to the food court, they would have those people out there that would offer you the little pieces of chicken or little pieces of food or whatever. They used to do it in the grocery store when I would go with my mom on Saturday mornings to the grocery store. They'd have people cooking sausages and food in the food aisle and uh, they would offer you a, a taste. And, and when they would offer me a taste of that food in the food aisle in the grocery store, man, I would sneak back around while my mother was shopping for other stuff and get some more of that good sausage or some of that good bacon 
that they were cooking in the aisle, whether it was Jimmy Dean sausage or Bob Evans bacon or whatever it was, I, I'd sneak, the whole time mom was in the store shopping, I'd just keep snack, slipping back around and getting me another piece and another piece. Why? Because I had tasted and I knew that that piece of sausage and that bacon was good. And uh, whatever it took for me to get another taste, I was going to do it. In the same way, um, Peter says to us here, if we've tasted of the goodness and the graciousness of God, we ought to keep coming back to the word of God. And, and when you're trying to get back in God's word, when you're trying to get back on the steady diet of God's word, um, write down uh, all of his gracious acts in your life that you are grateful for. And it'll cause you to now want to go back and, and desire the word. I like that because in verse uh, uh, two, or let's go up to verse one, um, there's, there's some things we have to put aside, if you will, in order to clean our palate for the word of God. He says, you ought to desire it uh, if you've tasted of it. He said, but there's some stuff you got to put aside to clean out your palate uh, for the word of God. He says, lay aside what? In verse one there, all what malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking. He says, put that to the side. He says, don't, don't, don't keep that in your life. Don't, don't keep uh, fellowship with those kinds of things. He says, put those things aside. Malice is when we are um, being evil or when we are uh, mean spirited, it, it means uh, uh, evil or, or, or wickedness. He says, anything that's wicked, anything that's, that's evil, uh, he says, put, put that to the side. Of course, deceit, uh, there are things that are um, trickery, slyness. Um, you, you've been around people who are slick. My father used to say they slick as, as two nickels uh, put together. And uh, you, you know, you just got some people that are slimy or that they're just, they're just slick. They're always trying to, to weasel in or out of something. They're always trying to pull something over on people. They, they bend the truth or they they don't tell all of the truth. They, they shade certain things a certain way. That's what deceit is. It's, 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 it's lies is what it is. It's deception with the intention of trying to take advantage of someone. He says, put that, he says, put that to the side. Get rid of that. Get rid of hypocrisy. You know what hypocrisy is? Hypocrisy is when we um, act one way, but we are really another way. A hypocrite. Um, is somebody who tries to present one face, but in reality, they have a whole nother face. They're what, um, when I was a little kid on the playground, we would say somebody was two-faced. I didn't really understand, I didn't really understand what that meant, but what it means is they had two different faces. They would show one face to one group and then turn around and show another face to another group. In fact, this word hypocrisy it, it, it comes from the Greek word that they would use for actors. And, and back in those days, actors uh, were people that were obviously in the community. But when they would get up on the stage and they would be in the theater, they would be given a mask to wear uh, for that character that they portrayed on stage. They would hold that mask up in front of their face and they would act out the character that they were portraying on the stage. But after the play was over, they would put their mask down go back in the community and be who they really are. God says, um, when you're trying to be a Christian, when you're trying to walk with the Lord, we can't walk in hypocrisy. We can't have a forward facing face that looks one way, but then behind the scenes, we look another way. He says, no, he says, put, he says, put that to the side. He says, get rid of all hypocrisy. And he says, get rid of all envy. Um, envy, that is when we, look at someone else's life or we look at what someone else uh, is doing or we look at what God is doing in someone else's life and and we are envious of what they do we we uh, we desire we covet we we have an unhealthy uh, interest in what God is doing in somebody else's life nothing wrong with looking over and seeing God bless somebody else and being excited 
and for their blessing being happy and joyful and even celebrating and praying for that. But there's something wrong when that interest crosses the line and it becomes envy. When we want what they have more than we want what God has for us. He said, can't, can't have got laid envy to the side. And then he says, of course, all manner of evil speaking. Don't let evil things come out of your mouth. And of course, that is not just a mouth issue. That's a heart issue because the Bible talks about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He says, so we got to clean out our heart so we can clean out our mouths. Uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We got to clean out our thinking so we can clean out our hearts. We can clean out what comes out of our mouth. He says, because in order to really desire the sincere milk of the word, number one, you got to have tasted of the grace of God. But then what the enemy will try to do in keeping us from the word is he'll get us caught up in all of this envy and deceit and malice and hypocrisy and evil speaking. And, and it'll, it'll ruin our appetite for the word of God. It'll ruin our appetite for the word of God. My mother would get so mad, Mother Anderson, if I ruined my appetite for the good dinner that she made. Boy, she, man, she would, she would work really hard to cook a nice dinner when I came home. But if I stopped by the convenience store before I got home and got me some sugar babies or some now laters or, uh, man, I used to get those little candies that, uh, that went around your neck. I can't even remember what those were. I'd have a pocket full of blow pops, just all kind of candy and sugar. If I ate that stuff on the way home and came into her house and told her I wasn't hungry, after she had cooked me a good meal and she found those candy wrappers in my pocket, boy, she would have a fit. <laughs> and, she, and what she would say is you have ruined your appetite for a good meal. And, and guys, and, and, and that's what we do when we get caught up in all of that stuff that he listed out there in verse one. It ruins our appetite for the goodness of God's word. A lot of times that's why people don't read God's word. That's why they don't get into it because their appetite, they've been eating all of this sugary stuff. They've been eating all this stuff in the world that now they don't desire uh, the milk, uh, the sincere milk of the word. Uh, when I got a little older and I started working in corporate America, I started going to some really nice restaurants. I thought I was going to nice restaurants when I was a kid. We would get to go out to Ponderosa. That was a big night for our family to go to Ponderosa and get a steak dinner. But when I got older and I worked in corporate America, they would take us out to these five-star restaurants. And in these five-star restaurants, they'd have these five, six course meals. And what they would do is they would give us these little sorbets. I didn't realize what it was, but in between each, each course of the meal, they would give us something that would clean our palate. It wouldn't be a big bowl of ice cream, but it'd be like a little sorbet, you eat it and it would cleanse the, the tongue or the palate so that you could enjoy the next course or the next installment of the meal that was coming. God says every now and then, you and I've got to clean our palate. We got to go back through the inventory of our life, inventory of our day. God, have I been envious? Lord, remove that from me. Have I been a hypocrite acting one way and then really I'm another way? Have I been speaking evil and saying things I shouldn't say? Have I been um, deceitful in any way? Lord, remove that from me so that I can, here it is, desire the sincere milk of your word. And that word um, desire there um, in verse two, he says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word. <clears throat> that word desire, write this down, means to crave, to crave. It means to crave. Um, it means to, to want it. It means to need it. It, it literally means to, to want to cry out for um, the word of God. That's what a baby does. That's what a newborn baby does. God is so awesome that when he forms a, a baby in the womb of a mother, there's a bond, a connection that is made between the baby and the mother. And when the ba baby is born, the mother and the baby still have a connection, even when the baby's outside of the womb. When the baby's in the womb, what the mother eats, <clears throat> the body then 
helps to feed the baby on what the mother eats. So that's why when the mother eats well, the baby is well nourished. But even on the outside of the womb, when that baby gets hungry and needs to be fed, the baby and the mother are connected where the mother has milk that is produced in her body that comes into her breast and her breasts fill up with milk at the same time that the baby is desiring of the milk that, she's, uh, that she possesses. There's a, there's a relationship between the mother and the baby. And oftentimes the mother would feel her milk or can feel her milk coming in even before the baby starts to cry because the body knows that the baby is going to need the milk. And the baby starts crying out for the milk. It is an uh, indication to the mother, it's time to feed the baby. And so God says, we ought to desire, crave, cry out for the sincere milk of God's word like a newborn baby because God knows like a mother he already has on tap what we what we are crying out for God knows that what you need is already set ready to go prepared for you in the word of God he says you just have to cry out for it you have to desire it as a newborn baby now underline this word here right before milk it is pure milk. He says, desire the pure milk of the word. Now, let me dig a little deeper into this. Pure milk is just what it says. It's, it's just the milk. It's not mixed with anything. It's not, doesn't have any additives in it, doesn't have any preservatives in it. It is the pure milk that is transferred from the breast of the mother to the mouth of the babe. There's nothing added to it. There's nothing nothing uh, subtracted from its pure milk. Now, I wasn't one as a kid that liked milk. I just didn't like the taste of it. Um, I liked my milk mixed with something. And, and my favorite mix was Nestle's chocolate milk. And then they came out with, with, with strawberry and I would get that. I, I would pour that chocolate in that milk, man, and I would drink it uh, all day long as long as it had something mixed in it. Because I, I didn't like the pure milk. I like my milk mixed with some. God says, no. He says, that's not what I want you to desire. He said, I want you to desire the pure milk of the word. In other words, I want you to desire the, the word, the word by itself. Now, thank God for teachers. Thank God for preachers. Thank God for men and women who have the gift of being able to see into the word of God and be able to share the word of God. Thank God for preaching. Thank God for teaching, because it is by the preaching of the gospel, the proclaiming of the gospel that we are saved. But the end goal of my preaching at New Horizons Church is not uh, necessarily so that you keep coming back to hearing me preach. I do want you to hear you hear the word preach. I do want you to come and listen to the word of God. Don't get me wrong. But the end goal of, of my ministry is I want you to get into the word for yourself. The reason that we have the model that New Horizons Church is where Christ is the way and the word is clear is because after hearing the word of God preached, I want you to desire to go and read the word for yourself. Uh, I don't want you to have to rely on me all the time in order to be um, blessed in the word of God. I want you to go and get it for yourself and I want you to be able to just read it and just be satisfied with the word where there's nothing added to it. There's no other words added to it. There's no other illustrations added to it. There's no other uh, histrionics added to it. It's just you sitting down, reading the word of God and, 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 and having God's word uh, bless you in the process. And again, nothing wrong with hearing preaching, nothing wrong with hearing good teaching. That's a part of your growth process as well. But that is to desire, is to cause you to desire to really want to read God's word and spend time with it, even on your own. That's why I try to teach you how to study the word of God on your own, to observe the text, to observe the truth that's in the text, to interpret that truth and be able to, to apply it. Okay, let me share three things really quickly, and then I want to open it up for some discussion. Three benefits that, that you will experience anyone will experience when they really um, desire the pure milk of the word um, 
three things you'll experience. Number one, when you when you drink of the milk of God's word, it will strengthen you. It will strengthen you, right? When a baby drinks milk, one of the things that that baby needs the milk for is to strengthen its muscle system, right? Because there at the close of verse two, that you may grow thereby, right? God wants you to grow. He wants to strengthen your spiritual muscles. He wants to strengthen your faith muscles so that you can exercise your faith. You can work out your salvation, exercise, work. That requires strength. That requires endurance. That requires you to be able to, to stand and having done all to do to stand. So when you get a steady diet of the word of God, when you get a steady diet of the milk of the word, it produces strength in your life. When you feel weak in your faith, when you feel like you're about ready to give in to temptation, or you're ready to be give in uh, to doing things you know God doesn't want you to do, or you feel the pressure of life pressing down on you, you feel weak, that's a time to get in God's word because God's word provides strength for us, not only when we're weak, but it provides strength for us to do the work that God has called us to do. Hard to do the work of God without the word of God. And, and I'll transition through this. In my 15 years now, I'm a pastor, and I will pastor New Horizons Church 15 years in the fall. We'll celebrate that. And I'm looking forward to celebrating that, hopefully, uh, with us in person. But I've learned some things about the people of God and the work of God in these 15 years. And, and it, it's this, that, that a lot of times the, the, the people who are students of the word are just that. They are students of the word. They like to study the word. They're, they're erudite. They, they, they like to study. They're, they're into the words and the grammar and all of that. They, they love that, Pastor. I love Bible study. I'm, I'm a student of the word. I'm, I'm into it. But, but sometimes those same people don't like to serve in the work. And then I have some other people in our church that are servants all day long. I mean, they're at the church. If I let them be there, if we had the doors open, they would be there seven days a week. They would be there each and every day. They would serve, 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 serve. But if you ask them where Genesis is in the Bible, they would struggle to find it. Great servants, but they are not students of the word. And the problem with both groups of people is that when you have people who are trying to serve, but, but they're not students of the word when they're working, but they're not in the word, they're carnal. So they get into arguments, they get in fights, things make them mad, they get offended, and they just keep up a lot of mess. But they're working at the church, but they keep up a lot of mess because they're weak. They're working, but they're weak spiritually. But then the people who are students of the word, but don't serve, they end up becoming very judgmental. They say things like, it should be this, and it should be that. It should be this, and it should be that. But they don't want to work to make it happen so that it is this, and it is that. I know I'm not, I'm not, you're not, you're not either one of those camps. I know all of you that are on this Bible study today, you are studying God's word, and you're serving at the same time. Because when you study, it, it brings you the strength for the work. The two go together. So the first thing is, God's word, the milk of it, will give you strength. Second thing is the milk of God's word will give you structure. It'll give you structure. When a baby is growing, um, it's not just growing its muscles, but it's, it's growing strength in its bone structure. And that's why they say milk is good for your bones. It gives you healthy bones. It's one of the benefits of milk. And so when God's word is, is milk to us spiritually, he gives us structure in our life so our life won't fall apart. That's the reason we have bones in our bodies so that when we're doing the work, when we're living, walking things out in God, we have some structure. Our shoulders are where they're supposed to be, elbows, where they're supposed to be, hands, where they're supposed to be, legs, arms, feet, ribs, skull. Everything is where it's supposed to be so that we can function. That's so God has made us so we have structure in our bodies. We have an organizing structure that allows us to function and move in what he's called us to do. That's what the word provides for us as well. It provides structure. It provides boundaries. 
it provides organization about how to think about life, how to think about family, how to think about church, how to think about ministry, how to think about all of the things God has for us to do. The word of God is what gives us our structure for how to do it. Because if you have strength without structure, it becomes strength without control. But when you have strength under in a structure, then it can produce power that can make a change. That's why if you see like water and, and water can, can just be out of control, it's just flowing everywhere. If it's, if it's out of control in your house, it'll ruin your house. It'll tear, if you got a leak in the basement, it'll tear up your foundation. If you got a leak, leak upstairs, it'll ruin your carpet. If you got water that's just going places and everywhere without any structure to it, it can be damaging to the foundation of the house. It can damage the materials in the house. It can damage the walls of the house. It can cause a tremendous amount of damage. But if you give water structure, then water doesn't become something that damages. It becomes something that can develop. When you send water through the filtering system and the watering system in your refrigerator, you put your glass underneath there and that water comes out in a nice cool stream and you put it in your glass and you drink it, man, it is cool and refreshing. When you send that water through your shower uh, in your bathroom and you get underneath that shower and that hot water hits you, it takes off all the dirt of the day because that water now has what? Structure. When you have a gutter system on your house and it rains and that water collects in the gutter and it's taken and it's moved out into the yard and that water uh, can water your yard, you have a plush green grass. Why? Because it's the same water, but it's just been operating inside of a structure. And as a Christian, we need that structure. And it comes from the word of God. You don't just want to be a wild um, water that's just flowing everywhere. You want to have some structure to your life so that God can use you to help bless other people and help be a blessing to the kingdom of God. So God's word provides strength. God's word provides structure. Then the last thing, and I'll open it up here for discussion, is God's word as milk provides satisfaction. Satisfaction. When a baby is crying, it's, it's dissatisfied. It has a need underneath its skin that has not yet been met. And when that baby is crying, it's crying out because it's dissatisfied. It has a need and it knows it needs to be satisfied. When that baby gets that milk or that milk is supplied um, by a parent or mother or another person, eventually what happens is that baby starts to drink that milk, starts to internalize that milk. And when that baby was crying, it stops crying and becomes soothed. And before you know it, it becomes satisfied. And before you know it, it falls asleep. <laughs> and, and, and it's no longer crying. It's no longer fussing. It's no longer kicking and screaming. But it is now soothed because it is satisfied. And that's what God's word will do with us. When we read it on a regular basis, and we study it and we internalize it. It'll soothe us. It'll satisfy a need that's underneath our skin like nothing else can do. Uh, no, no alcohol can do it, no drugs can do it, no other relationships, no, no movies, no music. Um, it, it's, it's the word of God that can satisfy the need underneath our skin. Because God says, if you taste it of his grace, he says, you'll desire the gospel. <laughs> if you taste it of his goodness, you'll desire the sincere milk of his word because it satisfies it gives structure and it strengthens. So I wanted to encourage you with that. That was our daily devotional scripture. Um, I gave the outline in the devotional, but I wanted to give a little bit more meat on the bones, if you will, a little bit more um, insight into 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And so uh, let me open it up uh, for any, any questions about what we talked, any comments about where you are and your desire for God's word. Um, let me open it up and um, for any questions or comments about the lesson today. Pastor, I was thinking uh, when you were talking about that baby and that milk, um, I was thinking back to my children and how they would be searching for that, that mother's breast. 
And they would be making all kinds of moves and stuff, trying to get to that mother's breast. And once they got to it, they latched on and you couldn't take it away from them. And that's the way we should be. When we get that word down in us, we ain't gonna let no, nothing separate us from that. We wanna latch on and keep growing and growing by that milk. Absolutely, that's, that's exactly right, mother. You got it. Then we get it, we latch on to it. And, and, and if you taste it, man, you, want, you, you know what that's like. You know how that word does. That's why some people don't understand why we on Bible study calls and go to church and, and, and read our word. It's not that we, sometimes not that we're so holy. It's just, it's been so good to us, <laughs> right? We can't make it without it. So yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Who else? Pastor, um, I had an experience today. Uh, I had to go into a store because my phone wasn't working properly and I got bad customer service. Um, and I literally felt like that thermostat that was trying to reach that goal, like I was about to explode. <laughs> and um, thoughts came to my mind and I had to just push it down. Um, but for some reason, all that came out of my mouth was a prayer and it was God's word. So I was, I was thinking something totally different, but what came out of my mouth was God's word. And I prayed it out loud. I mean, people will walk around cussing and fussing all day long. So I just said, well, let me just say this prayer. And I said this prayer and, and the young woman who helped me, I knew it wasn't her. Like, I don't know what she been going through, you know? but I didn't like how I was being served, serviced. I said the prayer and she immediately, I saw her just walk away and then she came back to me. And like the whole dynamic of the, um, that, that service just, it changed. Like the whole dynamic changed. And so for anybody who's out there struggling with your flesh rising in you, you know, you don't have to act out on anger. For years, I have acted out on anger and it, it has got me nowhere. So I just want someone to know that God's word will really resonate in your heart. Um, and I think that was one of the memory verses, hide the word in the heart so that um, you, you will not sin against thee. Um, but prayer and God's word absolutely works. Absolutely. And that's, that's a great testimony, Sean. Thank you for sharing that. And that's based on the word of God. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, what the mouth will speak, right? Out of the abundance of your heart. So what's in your heart today, Sean, was, was word. You, you've been studying it, and reciting it, and remembering it, and writing it down. So that's what was in there. And so even though you felt angry, frustrated, mad, maybe upset, um, those are real feelings that we, we don't divorce when we become Christian. Um, those are real feelings. But if what I've been putting in my heart is word, then what will come out of my mouth is word. But if I don't put the word in there, then what's going to come out is all of that frustration and then wickedness and malice and anger and all that will spew out of our mouths because that's what's in our heart. So that's a great testimony. Um, and I'm glad that, that it was able to change that atmosphere, not only for you, but it changed the atmosphere and the attitude of that young, that, that person that was, um, that was providing you the service. Um, and they'll, you never know how they'll respond as a result of that experience. That's great. Who else? Anybody else have a comment or question about the text we talked about? Hey, Pastor. Hey, Eric. Hey, I, I was following in and out in this hospital, hitting dead spots, but I got the last part when you said the strength of God's word mm -hmm. and how it can help you in having it hidden in your heart. Um, so I'm, I'm working and I'm walking through the hospital and I have a lot of supplies that I'm delivering, right? Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking, I'm, you know, this is what I do. I push and pull all day. And I was just 
pushing and pulling through the hospital and you know people see me but they think I can maneuver around them <laughs> with this stuff sometimes and I'm praying as I'm going through the hospital I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I can do hey how you doing today how can you do all that what you're doing and that word that I've hidden in my heart comes up and I recite that scripture. Hey, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. It's not that you uh, see me by myself. I got the Holy Spirit with me, walking and pushing and 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 making it making it happen. Um, so that word gives me strength, complete the task that I've started, and that's just to to do my job and also to be a witness and a testimony as I'm doing it. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you be able to get up on your feet and praying for you, and glad that you be able to push and pull and make it through. And yeah, the word the word is um, it strengthens us and um, it propels us to be able to do stuff we wouldn't otherwise uh, man, be able to do at all. So praise God for your strength that comes through the word. I appreciate you sharing that, Eric. That's good stuff. Amen. Who else? All right. All right. Well, good, good, good fellowship today. Good, good discussion. Good word. Um, go out there on YouTube if you haven't done so. The um, there's just a host of, of ministry opportunities that are that are coming through our online worship, our online experience. Um, the daily devotional, those are the three to four minute um, encouragement and the power of God's word. Those are out there. I think we're on day 25 or, or something like that of that. And then um, we're on day four of our um, prayer scriptures. And those are, 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 again, short, maybe three to three to seven minutes of pastor praying through our prayer booklet. And what I wanted to do with those is they go along with the devotionals, but also wanted to be able to pray with you um, and have you be able to, to pray with your pastor whenever you pray. And so for, there are a lot of people who like to hear the voice of their pastor pray with them in their prayer time. And so you can do that whenever you, you want to. And um, you can use it as a part of your devotion. And it also helps you to guide through the, um, the prayer booklet in those prayer devotions, we also um, have a time when we speak the uh, confessions uh, over our life. Um, and so each each week, uh, I have a confession that we speak before we pray. And so hopefully that is just encouraging you not only to spend time in the word, but also spend time in your prayer with God and, and stimulate you to do that. If that's a blessing to you, those are out there on YouTube and share those with, with some other people. We're have now uh, I think over six, 460 some subscribers to our YouTube channel, which is great. Um, when we started in this pandemic about a year ago, we didn't have a YouTube channel, so we've been able to grow that. And that's that's like those subscribers are like visitors to our church um, in person. Um, some people are all over the country that are listening to New Horizons now through um, our church family, uh, subscribing and then sharing the channel with somebody else. So if it's a blessing to you, share it with somebody else. Do the work of an evangelist today uh, to do that. And um, so, yeah, if you, if you need anything, please keep uh, Elijah Reeves' family in your prayers. His ongoing service is going to be um, this Friday at Friendship Church on the West Side. And so pray for his, 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 his uh, children. They're doing a great job. They're a good Christian family. They're doing a great job honoring the memory of their dad. And Elijah was a great, great member of the New Horizons Church family. So uh, please lift them up and then- um, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Pastor, I, I just want to, to say, a lot of people called him Otis. And oh, I yeah. was talking to Shirley and Shirley was saying Elijah and I was saying Otis, we are talking about the same person, but neither one of us knew what who the person was. So I yes. just wanted to say that somebody may know him as Otis and yes, not Elijah. Right. That's true. I knew him as Elijah. Um, that's that's how he introduced himself to me. 
Uh, but yeah, some people did call him Otis. So Elijah Otis um, Reeves. And um, yeah, so he, yeah, his home going will be this, this Friday. And then um, please lift up the, the Jumper family. Um, uh, Raymond Jumper, um, the son, um, passed away this week. He was a teenager, member of our church. His family uh, is a member of our church as well. He had an episode of something at uh, the YMCA. And he was just a, a 17 or 18 year old young man and uh, very, very difficult on his, on his parents as you can imagine, but he passed away. They are not gonna have um, any sort of um, celebration at a church or, or at a, um, a funeral home or anything like that. They just wanna to deal with their situation privately, but they did ask for our church to pray for them. I uh, talked to uh, the mother uh, yesterday uh, on Monday, and um, it's it's very hard as you can imagine. But please lift up the Jumper family. And um, Raymond passed away, a young man, uh, was part of our youth ministry and part of our church, and, and we love him dearly. So to be absent from the body uh, is to be present with the Lord. So we celebrate that, but we also need to comfort the family as they go through their season of grief and time of grief. Okay. Um, don't forget, if you are a leader in our church ministry, Demetrius has been sending out some communication. Hopefully you've been getting it regarding our next leadership meeting, which will be tomorrow night uh, on, on our Zoom call at seven. Uh, it's gonna really be about an hour. And what I wanna be able to do with you is uh, we're gonna have a time of fellowship on Zoom, uh, a, a, a time of fun activity on Zoom. And then I wanna share with you uh, some spiritual things. Hopefully we'll develop you as a leader. And then we'll share a couple of things that are coming up here in the next couple of weeks on the horizon, uh, if you will, some things that are gonna be taking place in our community and with our church. So we'll be on for about, like I said, about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes from seven till about eight, 8.15 tomorrow for all of our leaders, those of you who are in, in, in leadership at the church, okay? I think that is it. Um, thank y'all for being on, good to see y'all's faces or hear your voices or in many cases seeing y'all's pictures um i thank god for you making time on the noonday hour let me close out in prayer and uh, and then we'll we'll move forward in what we have all right father in jesus name we we love you and we honor you and bless you and praise you thank you for this moment in time we'll be sharing your word give us a desire a craving uh, uh appetite for your word we've tasted of your goodness and your grace in our lives Remove from us those things that are not pleasing in your sight, God, as we try to grow by your word, to be strengthened, to have structure, to be satisfied with what we hear and read and consume in your word. God, as we get ready to leave, we know we never leave your presence, so we pray the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would walk with us, talk with us, lead us, guide us into all truth until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love you too. Thank y'all.